Hi, this is Tim, and today we're going to talk about the two most popular type of analog signals used in industrial applications, and that is the milliamp signal and the DC voltage signal. Let's start with the voltage signal. Your typical analog voltage signal is going to be 0 to 10 volts. You see a lot of this in drive applications where you're controlling a drive speed. You'll see it be 0 to 10 volt. Also, if you have an application that needs to go reverse, you'll typically see the signal simply reverse, making it a minus 10 to plus 10 analog signal. And this is used a lot in servo applications. The other type of signal is the milliamp signal, which is a little bit tougher to comprehend initially, but is a much more robust setup for field instrumentation, which makes it much more popular. But before we talk about the milliamp signal, let's talk about the problem with our DC voltage analog signal, and that's voltage drop. Every fluid of wire you have has resistance, and every corroded terminal also creates resistance. And each amount of resistance you add in a loop creates voltage drop. So let's just jump right into a voltage drop calculator. So here we're going to select 22 gauge wire, which is a very common signal size, and our voltage is going to be 10 volt DC. And let's say we have one amp of load. Now the signal load is not going to pull one amp, but I want to make the error much more obvious to you. If our cable is one foot long, then the voltage on the other end of our cable is going to be 9.968 volts and chances are that's okay for our application if it's 10 feet long it's going to be 9.68 volts or 0.3 volts less than before now let's make it a hundred foot long which isn't that unusual for a field instrument the voltage on the other end is going to be 6.77 volts now, when I put out something like this, someone always comments and says, well, you should hook the shield up to prevent this from happening. Shielded cable is for reducing noise in analog circuits. It does not deal with voltage drop. Okay, I'm not gonna get into the details of how voltage drop works because there's a lot of great articles out there on that. So just Google voltage drop. But what I do wanna do is give one practical application showing voltage drop's effect on an industrial application. So I have a regular voltmeter set to DC volts here. I have our analog simulator and I have a thousand foot of 24 gauge wire. And what I want to do is show you the difference in the signal with a three foot connection to our meter up here and a thousand foot connection to our meter. So here I have our analog simulator hooked to this meter with a three foot piece of wire. And just to verify, I'm going to put this voltmeter right beside the simulator and you can see the analog simulator is putting out 10 volt and our display is showing 10 volt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this thousand foot worth of wire into the circuit. So I'm going to take the positive terminal off of our analog simulator and I have this wire here connected to this spool of wire. And then this wire here is the other end of it. So I'm gonna slide it into our post. You see it says 10 volt here, but we're only showing 9.8 volt over here. Now, just to verify that nothing is going wrong with our simulator, we're going to connect the meter. Our simulator is putting out 10 volt, but by the time we go through all of this wire here, it's creating enough resistance and voltage drop that we're only getting 9.8 volt to our meter. And that's the problem with a voltage signal, is that over any amount of distance, you're going to have voltage drop. Now, in a control cabinet where components are really close together, this isn't much of an issue. And that's why you'll see drive speed commands and various internal components be voltage signals. But you'll almost never see a voltage signal actually exit a control cabinet. For signals exiting the control cabinet, where the distance can be longer and the environment can be more harsh, we need a different type of measurement, and that's going to be amps. So unlike voltage, where resistance can create voltage drop, if amps goes into a wire, it must come out the other side. Now, one other thing to think about on the voltage signal before we disconnect all this is there is another issue, is if we take this down to a command of zero, so now we have zero volt here and we have zero volt here. How do you know the difference between a command of zero volt 
and a wire being loose. That's the other advantage of a milliamp signal, which we're going to get into a little more in a second. But it is a 4 to 20 milliamp signal. That means it has what they call a live zero. That way, if a wire is loose, it'll show zero milliamp. And we know then that we have a malfunction in the circuit. Now, let's just show how this is going to work with this milliamp signal. So, if you'll give me just a second, I'm going to modify our signal to accept a milliamp instead of a voltage signal. All right, so I have this wired for milliamp now, which, which will be this lower display. And we're going to go to current two wire mode. And we can bring this up. And I'm going to take it up to 20 milliamp. You see it says 20 milliamp right here. It also says 20 milliamp right here. Now I'm going to take this wire loose and I'm going to put the thousand foot roll of wire in the circuit. Also, one neat thing about our analog simulator is as soon as I took that wire off, you see it says open wire on it now. So now I will take that, tie it there, and put the other end of the spool through it. And unlike the voltage signal where we saw a drop when we put the thousand foot of wire in line, you see now it says 20 milliamp here, and it also says 20 milliamp over here. And that's the advantage of a milliamp signal. With the exception of, you know, leakage current and things that we'll address in the troubleshooting section of this series, milliamps in equals milliamps out. So as long as your load is not too high that it can't drive the signal, you'll have the same signal at your instrument that you're going to have at your PLC input. I hope this video has been helpful. Feel free to ask any questions in the comments. In the next video, we're going to start wiring analog signals. So we're going to wire our potentiometer here both to the meter that's beside of it and also to a PLC input and start understanding exactly how to make these circuits work. Till next time. Hi, this is Tim. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos. And like this video and comment on what you would like to see next. Visit our website where we offer a full line of PLCs, simulators, control panels, PLC trainers, and more.